So, I just finished watching the Samsung event and um, my wallet's not gonna be very happy with me very soon because I'm probably gonna end up buying everything they just announced. There were five new products announced at Samsung's Unpacked event this year. There were two watches, some new earbuds, and two new foldables that I know a lot of you are super excited about. Trust me, I am too. Let's start with the watches. The Galaxy Watch 4 and the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic. The only real differences between these watches are on the outside. The Classic is what you would consider to be a more of a traditional Galaxy Watch with that beefier look and the rotating bezel that kind of makes it look more like an analog watch. The regular Watch 4, however, falls more in line with the previous Galaxy Watch Active. It's got a more minimalist look to it, and if I'm honest, I think I kind of prefer the look to the Classic this year. They've got loads of new watch bands, and while both the Watch 4 and the Watch 4 Classic come in black and silver, the regular Watch 4 adds green and pink colors too. Both watches come with a higher resolution 450x450 450 displays, 5 nanometer CPUs, and half a gig of RAM more than last year, and they're probably gonna need it because this year Samsung partnered with Google to bring a whole new OS to the Galaxy Watch. They demoed lots of cool stuff like Google Maps using the built-in compass for example. There's also lots of new watch faces, some that definitely look better than others. But the most interesting feature is this body composition accuracy tool. I have real mixed thoughts about this. According to Samsung, the watch will use the new bioactive sensor on the bottom of the watch to capture 2400 data points within 15 seconds and then it'll use that data to measure body fat percentage, the mass of your skeletal muscle and body fat, your BMI, and a couple of other things with up to 98% accuracy. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not sure that I trust a watch to tell me my body fat percentage or BMI, but beyond that, this is a little bit concerning from a mental health and self-image standpoint. Sure, this sort of thing can be helpful for athletes, but I'm not sure it's such a great thing for my watch to be telling me that I need to lose some body fat. Just saying. Both watches will give you up to 40 hours of battery life, according to Samsung, and they will fully recharge in just under two hours. Not quite two full days of battery life, but pretty close. The Galaxy Watch 4 starts at 249 USD, while the Classic starts at 349 USD. I'm not exactly sure if that rotating bezel and the slightly classier design warrants a full $100 extra, but hey, I'll reserve judgment until I get them in hand, or on wrist. Next up is the new Galaxy Buds 2. Can I get something off my chest right off the bat here? Regardless of how these sound or how comfortable they are in your ear, these things are extremely ugly in my opinion. It looks like someone just jammed a plastic Easter egg into your ear. They're distinctive, I'll give them that but I'm not a fan. The good news is that these are meant to replace the original Galaxy Buds, so they're coming in at 150 bucks. For that price, you're actually gonna get a lot of bang for your buck. They have active noise cancellation and an ambient sound mode, something we rarely see in wireless earbuds that sit around this price. They come in white, black, olive, and lavender, and Samsung is claiming that the Buds will give you five hours of listening time with ANC turned on, and another 20 hours with the charging case. One cool thing they mentioned is that if you have the Buds 2 and the Galaxy Watch 4, you'll be able to control the Buds with with your watch. All right, now let's talk about the main reason you're all here, the Z Fold 3 and the Z Flip 3. I've been waiting quite some time to see if the leaks about these devices were true, and I am so glad that most of them were because these two phones look incredible. I will say though, there is one phone between the two that I am more excited about than the other. See if you can guess which phone that is in the comments below. The Z Fold 3 at first glance looks very similar to the Fold 2. It's got the same sized cover display and mostly the same dimensions, but this is a very different device for several key reasons. Number one, that 6.2 inch cover display now runs at 120 hertz, so both screens on this phone run at a high refresh rate. That's awesome. But the thing I'm more excited about has a lot less to do with the technical specs and a lot more to do with the durability upgrades they made. Both the Z Fold 3 and the Z Flip 3 are now IPX8 water resistant, which is a huge upgrade in and of itself. But even more important than that is that they've upgraded the inner displays of both phones with a new protective layer that is said to be 80% more durable than previous folding phones. Now that's great for peace of mind, but it's also great because they just announced two new S Pens, both of which were designed for the Z Fold 3, the S Pen Pro and the S Pen Fold Edition. You might have noticed by now that Samsung has removed the hole punch inside the camera of the Z Fold 3. Now that's because there's a mostly invisible camera underneath the display for things like video calls. Now it's only four megapixels, so I can't see it being all that great, but that's a small compromise for an uninterrupted display experience. Those are the major upgrades to the Z Fold 3 in my opinion. They've done some UI overhauls and added a new labs feature which allows you to multitask with any app, which is great. But other than that, there's not a whole lot different. There's a similar 
12 megapixel triple camera array that was on the Z Fold 2 and a 10 megapixel cover display camera. There is a small downgrade on this third edition of the Fold though. The battery size has been reduced from 4,500 milliamp hours to 4,400. Now the Z Fold 2 had an excellent battery life overall, but given that they've upgraded the cover screen to 120 hertz this year, battery life might become a bit of a problem. For internal specs, it's been updated to the latest and greatest Snapdragon 888, no surprise there, and it has 12 gigs of RAM on both the 256 gig and 512 gig configurations. The Z Fold 3 will retail for 1800 US dollars, which is still a far cry from affordable, even though it is cheaper than last year. Then there's the Z Flip 3. This phone has had a massive design overhaul and I fall more in love with it every single time I look at it. I think it might be a little bit polarizing for some, but if I'm being totally honest here, I think it's one of the best looking phones that has come out of 2021 so far. It comes in a bunch of new colors this year, although my personal favorite actually comes exclusive to the Samsung's website. I'm definitely grabbing one of those panda looking ones for myself. Samsung also went a bit nuts on the accessories this year for the Z Flip 3. There are tons of them. There's strap cases, ring cases, leather cases, and they all come in lots of different colors. It's obvious that Samsung thinks the Flip is for people that are more fashion forward for some reason. The biggest upgrade from last year's Flip is obviously the cover screen. It's four times larger and it can do way more stuff. You can dismiss notifications, change settings, use Samsung Pay, and play with eight different widgets, all from the cover screen display. The cover display can also be customized in a million different ways, and it comes with presets in case you wanted to match it to your Galaxy Watch 4. Aside from the durability improvements that I mentioned earlier, the display also got a massive technical upgrade. It's the same size at 6.7 inches and resolution at full HD+, but it went from 60 hertz to 120 hertz. Nice. Once again though, I am a bit worried about battery life. The Z Flip 3 has the exact same 3300 milliamp hour battery as was in the last year's Z Flip, so it's a good chance that it won't be an all day phone for some people. On paper, it doesn't look like they've done much with the cameras here either. They keep talking about using super clear glass on both the Z Flip and the Z Fold this year, but other than that, not much has changed. It's got three cameras, a 12 megapixel wide and a 12 megapixel ultra wide on the rear, and a 10 megapixel camera on the inside. You're getting a Snapdragon 888 with the Z Flip 3 as well, along with eight gigs of RAM and either 128 or 256 gigs of storage. My personal favorite part though is the new price. This premium foldable starts at 999 USD, the same price that you'd pay for an S21 Plus at launch. I think these things are gonna sell like hotcakes, honestly. The Z Flip was a great phone, but now that they've improved durability, made the cover display like 10 times better and dropped the price significantly, the Z Flip 3 just got a lot more attractive. So which of Samsung's new products are you most excited about? let me know in a comment down below. I'll definitely be making loads of new content on these new devices, so subscribe if you haven't already to find out when those videos drop. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day.